Welcome back to the Railgic Geo channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at a Cogito video. Uh, Cogito is one of the channels that is highly recommended to me, uh, specifically videos like this Hinduism video, the Sikhism, the Tamil video, the Buddhism video. Um, so we're going to take a look at them, I think, over the course of the week and uh, see what's up. I will probably go ahead and start with the Hinduism video right over here, seeing as it is their most popular video. Oh, wow. Okay, so they've changed their style a little bit on their newer releases. They have a hour-long video on the Bengali people. I might have to take a look at that as well. Kalistan, the, the uh, Haiti situation. Oh, wow. Okay, so... <laughs> this is interesting, actually. Um, <clears throat> the Sikh independence movement here, this is actually a pretty big uh, recent controversy over in Can uh, Canada, Kanada. Um, so yeah, that that's uh, definitely something that I might have to take a look at as well. Um, but I think today we're just going to go ahead and start with the Hinduism video. Hinduism. The H Hinduism. H Hinduism. People. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Uh, so I am going to go ahead and react to this. If you want to watch the video or want to get to the channel, I will post the link down in the description below. I do that for every video that I react to, so make sure to go and give them a uh, subscribe, give them a little like as well. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I say let's just go ahead and get into it, yeah? Hinduism, the religion of over a billion people, is the world's oldest religion and probably the most confusing one to non-Hindus. Some say it isn't even a religion, more a way of life. Hindus themselves call it the Sanatana Dharma, the eternal. The the Sanatana Dharma. Why? What? How do you how, how do you say that? Religion, more a way of life. Hindus themselves call it the Sanatana Dharma. Sa the eternal. <laughs> Sanatana Dharma. Okay, I think I said it correctly. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Old tradition. So, what is Hinduism? Does YOLO apply to them? And who is this elephant guy? Well, Ganesh. I know, I know Ganesh. Um, <clears throat> so when it comes to Hinduism, I really don't know a terrible huge amount. I, I, I'm actually not particularly like religious in a sense. I'm spiritual. I have uh, potentially a belief in other things. I'm just not following a specific religion right now. Um, but when it comes to Hinduism and a lot of the the, the the different religions from basically outside of the U.S., I'm I'm unfamiliar with them greatly. So it's a uh, it's gonna be interesting. Curiosity Hinduism visualized. Is the oldest active religion. It's the result of the merging of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and the nomads that came into India around 1500 BC. Some scholars say it could even go back many more thousands of years. If they be aliens. I see this this first one here where the a a Aryan theory was wrong. But we won't delve too deep into dates because dates in Hinduism are very, very controversial. But one thing is certain. Hinduism Weird. is old. Like, yeah. at least 36 Betty Whites. Hinduism has been around for... Uh, okay. For so long that it and the concept of India itself are inseparable. Hindu and India even come from the same word. Sanskrit was the ancient language of the Hindus. And the they Sanskrit do? name for the Indus River is oh. Sindhu. The ancient Persians who sat across the Indus tended to switch their S's to H's, so Sindhu became Hindu. So the people living across the river became Hindus. The Persians told the Greeks, who dropped that very not Greek-like H, stuck in a very Greek-like E to the end, and boom, India. Hinduism has a lot- Is that legit? Is that- is that legit? That's pretty cool if that is. But, uh, but the- the- the actual name of India is Bharat, right? But it's also India. I, I don't know. I don't know. Long. I, <laughs> you would think I would know by now. You would think I would know. I just I don't, I don't know what the popular opinion or the the correct uh, naming is. Long history. But today we'll be focusing on just the core beliefs of Hindus because I don't have the willpower to animate a three hour long video. Hindus are a diverse group. Some are strict, dedicating their lives to prayer, while others 
don't believe in any gods but still follow Hindu philosophy. <laughs> what is this? Is Vishnu an SJW? Is is Vishnu an SJW guys? Is is this like referencing to a like popular uh, Hindu content creator? I I I I don't I don't know. To make things easier to understand, let's break Hinduism down into seven core beliefs. So here's my rap about the seven Hindu beliefs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this video. <laughs> okay. I didn't know what I was ex what I was coming into when I started watching this channel. I, I haven't seen any other video. I haven't seen a single other video. Chris, you weren't gonna do the rap. Come on, you're better than this, man. Fine. Here's the regular version then. Okay, one, thank you. Belief in one universal soul. Oh. Hindus believe in a universal soul known as Brahman. A Brahman. formless, okay. genderless source of all reality. Brahman is the universe and the material that makes up the universe. It's a trippy concept, but think of Brahman as an ocean and everything else as drops propelling out of that ocean. Separate for a time, but still the same thing if that makes sense. Two, hmm. belief in an immortal individual soul. In Hinduism, souls are known as Atman. Actions of the soul while in a body have effects on that soul's next life. When you die, your soul moves to another new body. This is called transmigration. The kind of body the soul inhabits next is determined by karma. Three, belief in karma. Karma is action, usually good or bad actions that affect society. For Hindus, karmic actions in the past affect us today, and our actions today affect our soul's future. Four. So this is actually really interesting, because, I, I mean, this is all stuff that I kind of relate to, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm very big on karma. Um, I do believe uh, the universal scale. I do, I do think something, like, if there is something... It's definitely more of a universal scale or a multiversal scale, right? It's not necessarily, you know, so whole, solely focused on humanity because a lot of religion is is focused on humanity. My belief that is if there is a higher being, if there is like a creator, if there is something beyond our understanding, it is it is on the entire scale of the entire universe and we're just like little little specks inside of that, right? Interesting. Belief in moksha. The goal in Hindu life is to somehow get back to Brahman. If a Hindu can do this, they will be freed from the cycle of life and death. This is called moksha. You can achieve moksha by realizing your oneness with Brahman. How you realize this is up to you. For this reason, Hindus pray, lead me from the unreal to the real. Five, belief in the Vedas. The Vedas are Hindu sacred books of knowledge. There are four Vedas. Hindus believe that all four were divinely revealed to ancient Hindu sages. We'll take a closer look at the Vedas in a while. 6. Belief in Cyclical Time For Hindus, there are no beginnings or endings. Time is a series of cycles, each cycle containing four ages or yugas. There's the Krita, the Treta, the Dwarapara, and the Kali. Added together, the four yugas total about 4.32 million years. At the end of each cycle, declining human morality leads to the total destruction of reality. Hindus believe that we are in the fourth and final yug, Kali. 7. Hmm. Belief in Dharma Dharma is a difficult word to translate to English. Proper behavior is the best that I could come up with. Dharma maintains balance in the universe. As long as everything in the universe, like animals, plants, and humans, follow their dharma, then everything will be fine. If they break from the dharma, though, things will be super not fine. Each being has its own dharma. A lion's dharma is to kill and eat antelope. A king's dharma is to rule well. A subscriber's dharma is to smash the like button and ring the notification bell. For humans, their okay. specific dharma is usually based on their age and their caste. An old priest will have a very different dharma than a young merchant, for example. So those are the seven core beliefs of Hinduism. With them, you can understand the Hindu mindset. 
Unlike Christianity or Islam, Hinduism is a non-profit organization. There is no Jesus or Muhammad for Hindus. There is no Bible, Quran or Torah. Instead, they have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of different sacred texts. The okay, it was funny when he said non-profit organization because the, the first thing I thought of... So here in the US, specifically uh, when I used to live in Kansas City, Missouri, um, there... <laughs> <laughs> there was this giant mega church, huge mega church. It is just, uh, just unbelievable scale. Like the the, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, whenever so, whenever I think of 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 like things like Christianity or, or the such, I always think of those mega churches and like the TV pastures and people just keep tithing them and giving them more and more money and money and money and money and, money and, money and, and then you see like videos of those super like rich pastures flying around on private jets. And it's just like, Oh my God, what, what, what is even going on? Right. So that's when he, when he said that, that's what I was thinking of. Four Vedas form the basis of the Hindu faith. So let's take a look at them. One, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is a collection of songs that praise and discuss ideas like truth, reality, and the universe, along with discussions on war, weddings, and rituals. Two, the Yajur Veda. The Yajur Veda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. 3. The Sama Veda. Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. Hmm. It is mostly songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because it's set to music. 4. The Atharva Veda. The Atharva Veda is my favorite one. Do you want to curse your enemies? Or charm that special someone? Maybe learn to invoke rain? or discover herbal medicine along with tips on warfare, like how to make poison arrows, well, this Veda has you covered, along with a bunch of other charms and curses. Hmm. It even has a curse against cursors. Avoid us, O oh curse, as a burning fire avoids a lake. Strike him here that curses us, as the lightning of heaven, the tree. A link to the Atharveda is in the description, just in case you need a spell to get a wife or another to banish pigeons from your presence. It's, it's great. I wouldn't want to banish pigeon, pigeons from my presence. I actually have a, 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 I feed a bunch of birds. So if there, if there's something to bring more birds to me, I would gladly do that. Uh, I like, um, I like seeing the birds happily eat and fly around my house. Thank you very much. After the Vedas come the Upanishads, which are like a sequel that makes the original make much more sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC and 500 BC, during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their ideas became the Upanishads. The Upanishads are books on philosophy, like we would expect from Plato or Aristotle. They're all about questioning, doubt, debate, and finding the answers to life's difficult questions. A theme in the Upanishads is that people are not their minds, or bodies, or egos, but their Atman. Your soul is you. Everything else is unreal and temporary. After the holy texts like the Vedas and the Upanishads are other less divine but still important texts. These include stuff like the Puranas, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Puranas are like encyclopedias of Hindu beliefs. There are 18 well-known Puranas. The Puranas cover things from yoga, to army organization, to taxation, to the caste system, to hell, gods, and everything in between. Hmm. The Bhagavad Gita, Gita for short, is one of Hinduism's most important texts. The Gita takes place on a battlefield where Arjuna, a great warrior, refuses to fight. Lord Krishna steps in to urge Arjuna to fight and their discussion covers things such as dharma and how to live your best life. Arjuna eventually fought after Lord Krishna taught him the truth about dharma. As a member of the warrior caste, Arjuna's dharma was to fight against evil. The lesson of the Gita is that everyone faces difficult choices, but they must act on them according to their dharma, no matter how unpleasant. Along with all these... <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know how, how to feel about the, uh, the more comical bits in the video itself, but um, interesting. I mean, the, the, the topic is interesting. Philosophical texts. Hinduism has two action-packed epics, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Ramaya, the earlier of the two texts, tells the story of Prince Rama. In the epic, you find out about his 14-year-long exile, the abduction of his wife Sita, his battle with the evil demon Ravana, 
and his awesome monkey sidekick Hanuman. The second epic, the Mahabharata, is the longest poem in the world. Five really? times the length of the Bible and eight times the length of the Iliad and Odyssey combined. That's... <laughs> That's kind of wild, okay. It rivals any soap opera you've ever seen when it comes to drama. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> oh, gasps in Hindi. Oh my god. I have to see it again. Okay. Murder. Betrayal. Love, love murder, and giant battles. The Mahabharata has it all. The theme running through there. I've, I've not heard of this Mahab Mahabharata. Does he have a, a source on that? Um, I mean, hey, I should probably read that if it's so good, right? Maya and the Mahabharata. Ma that... Mahabharata, Mahabharata, Mah Mahabharata. I'll, I'll try to remember that. The greatest spiritual epic of all time. Dharma must be followed for society to function. Hmm. In Hinduism, there are four goals a person should aim for to have a good life. The first of these is Dharma, followed by Artha, the pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, Kama, pleasure both in body and in mind, and Moksha, the release from the cycles of rebirth. Hindus should practice Artha and Kama with Dharma in order to achieve Moksha. There are also six temptations Hindus should try and avoid. Kama, lust and materialism, this kama is different from the good kama mentioned above, I know. Next is kruda, which is anger, loha, which is greed, moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people, and power, mada, which is pride, and matsarya, which is jealousy. By f I agree with all this. <laughs> I absolutely agree with all of that. Following their dharma and avoiding these six temptations, a Hindu yeah, can break we, the cycle. We should, we should, I, 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 it, 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 no matter your belief, you should always uh, try to avoid those things. Cycle of rebirth and have their soul merge back into Brahman. But even though everything comes from Brahman, who is the one real thing in Hinduism, Hindus do, after all, have thousands of gods. So let's take a look at them. First, there's Brahma, the creator. He created everything in the universe, but he is not the universe itself, because that's hmm. Brahman. They aren't the same thing. That last letter changes a lot, apparently. He has four heads. The heads face each of the four directions to represent the four Vedas, which he created, and the four Yugas. He also holds a book, which represents knowledge. Oh, and he rides a giant swan, because he's just fancy. His consort is Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Vishnu, the preserver, is the second member of the Hindu trinity. He preserves the world created by Brahma until it is eventually destroyed by Shiva. He holds a discus, which he uses to cut down anyone that tries to mess with his dharma, along with a conch, which symbolizes victory and the five elements. Vishnu has many, many avatars, such as Krishna or Rama, who he uses to defend dharma on earth. Oh, and he rides a giant eagle named Garuda. Vishnu has two consorts, the goddess Lakshmi and Budevi. Budevi is the earth goddess and Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth. Next is Shiva the destroyer, the third member of the Hindu trinity. It's his job to destroy the universe in order to prepare for its renewal at the end of each cycle of time. The most identifiable of his features is his third eye, which he almost always keeps closed. If he does open it and you're in front of him, then you will have your face melted off. When not on making existence, okay. Shiva enjoys long it's funny how they used uh, the the uh, Indiana Jones image there because wasn't the second one uh, filmed in Sri Lanka? It was meant to be filmed in India, but like they, uh, they didn't get like India didn't give them permission. The Indian government didn't give them permission to film, so they went to Sri Lanka and pretended it was India. Anyways, Ong walks with his bull named Nandi. Nandi. At the end of the Kali Yuga, the fourth age of the world, Shiva will perform a dance that destroys the universe. Which is odd, because people have told me that my dance moves make them wish the world would end. So me and Shiva have quite a lot in common. Paravati and Sati are- Oh. <laughs> the, the humor is, um... 
The humor's weird. The humor's weird. Shiva's consorts. Shiva also has two sons, Ganesha and Murugan. Ganesha is worshipped as the remover of obstacles, and Murugan is the god of war. Ganesha holds a very special place in the heart of Hindus, due to him being the remover of obstacles. The elephant head is the most obvious clue to identifying him. He was actually born with a human head, but after Shiva cut that one off, he kind of had to make do with an elephant one. If you're Christian or Muslim, you're aware that your religion has a bunch of different denominations, like Catholics or Protestants, Sunni and Shia. Hinduism has these too. Hindus developed four major denominations, some of which have their own subdivisions. The Vaishnavas primarily worship Vishnu and Shaivas primarily worship Shiva and his sons. Smartas follow sacred texts like the Puranas, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata rather than the Vedas. They worship five gods and goddesses, Ganesha, Durga, Surya, Shiva and a preferred avatar of Vishnu. Finally, Shaktas worship the goddess Devi. Shaktas see Devi as the ultimate and eternal reality, like a feminine Brahman. Even though there are all these variations hmm. and more, the core beliefs of Hindus remain mostly the same. Hindus believe that Dharma keeps the balance in the universe. If the scales between good and evil start tipping towards evil, then something needs to intervene to fix the universe's Dharma. This divine intervention is known as an avatar. The literal meaning of the word avatar is descent. Avatars are gods that descend to earth to intervene whenever help is needed to restore Dharma. For example, when the earth was dragged underneath the ocean, Vishnu descended to earth as the avatar of Raha, a boar and drag the earth back out. In other cases, wow. Vishnu was born on earth as a human avatar like Rama or Krishna, where he spent his avatar's life fixing Dharma. So, the caste system. If you only know one thing about Hinduism, this is probably it. People yeah. see it as an <clears throat> oppressive system that locks people in place based on their birth. And for a huge part of history, that's what it's been, unfortunately. Let's do a quick explanation of what the caste system is. In Hinduism, there are four castes or classes that you can be born into. There's the Brahmin, the priest, the Kshatriyas, the warriors, the Vishas, the traders, and the Shudras, the manual laborers. The main basis for the caste system can be found in the Bhagavad Gita and the Rig Veda. Krishna says in the Gita, I have created a fourfold system in order to distinguish among one's qualities and functions. The Rig Veda also refers to the four castes. It says humans were created from parts of the god Purusha, the Brahman from his face, the Kshatriya from his arms, the Vaisha his thighs, and the Shudra his feet. This system was supposed to assign people functions based on their abilities, not their birth. If someone had the qualities of a Brahman or a Vaisha, they could fill those roles. The Gita didn't restrict movement among castes, and the caste system functioned as intended for a while. Until a document... Until the British ruined it. <laughs> ...known as the Laws of Manu came about around the 5th century BC. Oh no, okay. Popularly referred to as the Manu Shmer... <laughs> I, just, uh, I was just so ready to, uh, to, to put blame on the British. ...they created hard rules for Hindu life. Two rules presented in it contributed to the way the caste system turned out. Manu states that the Brahman were the lords of all castes, and he forbid moving among the castes. Hmm. The caste you were born into was now the caste you're stuck in. See, I 100% I, I disagree with this version of the caste system where you're stuck in the, 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 the I guess, the segment in which you were born in. If you give humans a hierarchy... They'd exploit it, and things will go sour pretty quickly. Yep. As time passed, Hindus began thinking in terms of upper and lower castes. Soon, cleaning toilets, tanning leather, and dealing with meat products were thought to be impure. The people doing those jobs became untouchables. The lowest of the low, a people without caste. And the wow. rest is history. The modern world has brought many changes, though. Now Hindus mix freely while working together in the same businesses, attending the same schools, and generally just living together. But when it comes to marriage, many Hindus still stick to their own caste. 
But this too is changing and on Hindu dating websites you can actually see people list a non-preference for caste. It'll say caste no bar. So wow. those are the basic. <laughs> that's that's so interesting because it's not, it, it's, I don't know, it's just not something that I've ever had to deal with before. ...of Hinduism. It isn't even close to covering everything. One video simply can't do it. Hinduism is too diverse, too deep, and means too many different things to different people. But learning even the basics of this fascinating and ancient religion gives us an insight into the worldview of over a billion people. And I hope you enjoyed it. You can find hmm. all the sources used in the description below. If you would like to follow your correct dharma, then please subscribe. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links to my t-shirt store and Patreon also in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. Interesting is what I'll say. Um, <laughs> this video was interesting. It really, really, really was. Um, I will say, watching the video, my main takeaway is that I do want to learn more about Hinduism, but probably from a more serious source. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes in here interdispersed that uh, I feel, I don't know. I mean, it's there too, because it's, I mean, it's a YouTube video, right? It's made for, you know, like a specific audience, but I don't know. I was, I just was not prepared for the jokes. And there was even one about like this, like um, scam artist somewhere um, when he was showing off the books. Uh, I don't remember quite where it was. I, I, I noticed it, and I, was, I, I didn't comment on it, uh, this right here, where he showed off this guy over here. Yeah, him. So I, I don't remember his name, but he's like, um, he's allegedly scam artist. Um, anyways, so I don't, I don't know why he showed him there, but... <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no no okay so uh, surprisingly enough it feels like i align quite a bit like on a on a uh, overall type of scale uh specifically like the four the, the 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 core beliefs are something that maybe i uh, yeah it's it's something that i would would say that I've thought of before when I've, you know, I've thought of my, you know, my own spirituality, my own, my own person, my own understanding of the universe, right? Um, there is a few things I want to look into, uh, spe very specifically after this, and those are the, the two epics that he, uh, he, he spoke of. Um, I'm trying to find them. Don't quite remember where he had them shown off in the video. Oh, right here. I want to look at the, the I want to look up these two for sure. Maybe I'll read them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long this one is, but if it's the longest thing, longest poem ever written, I don't I don't know if I'm ready to sit down and read it <laughs> quite yet. But maybe maybe I am. Maybe I should. Maybe maybe I should. Right. Um, but yeah, no. Overall, uh, it seemed like it was a really fun video. Uh, it, it explained the points very accurately. Uh, we're not, I shouldn't say accurately, but it, it explained the points for like the, the average layman, like someone like me who is, is, uh, you know, an outsider that doesn't know anything about it. He explained it enough where I can understand a little bit more and yeah, I want to learn more. Uh, I want to try to find a more serious video to, uh, to sit down or something to read. Uh, so if you have happen to have a, a link to, uh, a video where it explains a little bit more, feel free to post it down below. Um, remember to go in the description, check out Kogito, his channel. I will have the link to this video there. And uh, remember to uh, like my channel, give it a little uh, subscription, leave a comments. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one, okay? Take care. Goodbye.